Hello everybody, this is Jeffrey G297 and welcome to the episode. In this episode, I'm going to be using the legendary Sauber C9 Mercedes Benz Group C Le Mans prototype at Le Mans. Now, I've done this car several times throughout my channel, uh, but mainly been using it at Sardina. But someone uh, was able to put in the comments that they would love to see this car at Le Mans. So, there you go. So, in this video, I'll quickly show you guys how to get this car explain how it works and most importantly I'll show you guys the livery I'll be using which is a pretty special livery and last but not least I'll show you guys the build setup for this car and then some gameplay of the race itself what to expect from the car so without no further ado let us get started in this episode so in order to get the legendary Sabre C9 Mercedes-Benz class group C car um, unfortunately you can find here at the Haggerty Collection at Legends Cars. Now, unfortunately, it's no longer here. It was here at least two days ago, if not yesterday, but we have the 92 CP, so that's good. Uh, we got one very popular Group C car, which everyone loves, uh, at Haggerty Collection. But where this Alfa Romeo is right here, that's where the car was, I believe. If not, then it's probably where, beside this bird other side. But if you do have the car, then let's continue on to stage two. So in this particular next clip, I want to show you guys the livery that I'll be using for this car. Now, it doesn't really matter what livery you use for the car. If you want to use your own livery, you can. Um, so here's the livery that I'll be using for this race. It's a special uh, number 31 Mercedes-Benz uh, livery from 1991. And Michael Schumacher actually drove this car. It was actually was able to put down the fastest lap of the race uh, in the 24-hour race at Le Mans back in 91. So... Um, after you get delivery, here is the setup that I'll be using for the mall itself. So, first things first, we'll be using Racing Hard Tires as our tire choice for this race. Here's my numbers for my suspension. If you guys want to pause the video, you can, just to copy it down. Uh, same thing goes for the differential as well. Uh, 5 for torque, 15 for acceleration, 5 for braking. Um, if you want to copy that, you can. If not, that's totally up to you. Um, however, what you do need to copy down is the downforce itself. The front downforce is set to 500 so it makes sure it's all the way down to the lowest point. Uh, the rear is 1600 so it makes sure it's all the way to the highest point value. Um, for your ECU it's going to be 81 as you see so right there. Make sure you have the full control computer equipped on your car before this works. After doing that you'll then need to get uh, the power restrictor and make sure it's set to 72. After that you also need to have the fully customized manual transmission Set that to 370 is what I recommend doing, and as we scroll all the way to the far right, uh, that is going to be it uh, for this episode. There's, there's a lot of nerfing involved, especially reducing the uh, the top 8 horsepower. Um, so after you do that, adjust the wings, uh, the downforce, you should be good to go. And we're going to go ahead and ride on cockpit cam because it looks so good on this cam. Not to mention the sound of the engine is really good too. Uh, but once you do drive this car, you'll begin to notice that this car really has really amazing grip um, and traction. So this car is pretty much very simple, very smooth, super smooth per se. Um, as we're already making some spots already in this race, we're going to make a nice dive bomb on the Porsche. Um, as it's on our outside, we're going to make up a spot, moving us to P15 as we just barely clear it. Um, but we do get the job done. As we get started on the Menselin straight, uh, we do have a good uh, corner and get a lot more speed compared to the rest of these drivers and you can see we're making a lot of more spots until we hit that main straight. Now the car itself, despite having a major nerfing on the max horsepower of this car, it actually can still travel up to 108 miles per hour so we still have the advantage of top speed. Um, considering that we lost a good bit of top speed when we actually had to nerf the overall horsepower. But, as you can see, the first turn we can actually send the car very much deep into the braking point, a lot deeper uh, than these great fours can. So that right there is also going to be a huge help too. Mainly handling and the braking itself seems to be a whole different level uh, compared to these great four cars. So that's going to be your main huge difference, it's going to be that. Yes, we have the speed difference, the speed advantage, but the real advantage will come to play whenever you hit your braking points and especially the handling itself because this is a group one car. So of course it's going to have much better handling than the group four car. Um, so let us now move to a different camera angle as you see right here. 
up to the up to the top five so we're actually making some nice ground on the leader as you see we have the genesis right in front of us down the road as we're about to end the missile straight you see you got the suki swift as the leader then we got Valver P2 for between the Corvette and the Viper. We're going to make a move on the outside, moving us to fourth place, passing the Genesis. And now we set our sights on the Dodge Viper. So as we head to the second part of the main straightaway, um, actually this takes a little bit while to get enough speed where we can actually do, uh, are able to actually chase down the Viper. Um, but once we do get that nice slipstream, we're going to pull out just right, right here. And get ourselves to move to P3, make sure we're clear, and then get back to the racing line and get ourselves some more of that slipstream from the Corvette. But it's been a pretty smooth, easy drive overall, uh, making our way through the field. Uh, as you see, we're going to make a move on the outside of the Corvette, second gear to this corner. We can really put down the power down a lot earlier than the Corvette does, making us get an easy P2. As we head to the right hand turn right here, we're actually very close to the Suki Swift. Uh, and we'll actually be able to challenge for the lead as it's going to hit three minutes. We'll take the lead right at the three minute mark. One second after three minutes. And right here you'll begin to see a huge difference between our cars and the rest of the group four cars. Especially this corner right here. We can actually brake and then hit third gear and then back to the power literally as soon as possible. And right then and there you can see easily we can pull away from the rest of the group. Um, so this car is a really smooth, gentle, not gentle, very smooth, aggressive uh, build. I really love how the car handles, um, especially in cockpit cam, just knowing that you have the confidence and the grip from the car. You can just really sling it back and forth wherever you put it. The car always will have grip and traction just to make that corner work uh, no matter how fast you're traveling. So as we get done with the first lap, Pulling the lit away for a good gap. It's going to be right below the four minute mark. Uh, so it was a very good lap for us. Um, fast forward to lap three. We actually do have some weather uh, that does involve some rain involved in lap three. Uh, just like most of the time it does. Um, so even though it's a light sprinkle, I'm not really too concerned about it. Uh, because it's not really that heavy. Even though we do have the windshield wipers deployed. Um, it's not really too heavy thankfully. Uh, but there were some parts that we actually did experience some darker shades of blue rain. So we actually did have a couple of uh, bursts here and there for hard rain. Um, but it wasn't really that bad where we had to come to pit road to switch to enters. So I just mainly for about half a lap to a, nearly a full lap actually endured uh, the pretty much the inter conditions with the slicks. Um, lost some time but like I said it wasn't not much, not much big deal um, but yeah it was an overall really smooth run for us we didn't really have that much of rain surprisingly as you expect from Lamal um, so yeah that was actually a pretty nice change not have to worry about paying for wets or enters um, as you can see we've really left the field high and dry fast forward to lap 5 you can see now it's back to dry conditions we did lose a good bit of time between lap 3 and 4 that's because that was when the track became a little bit on the intermediate uh, phase but when lap 5 hit it was back on the dries so in this lap right here all we're going to do is just get some fuel and that's going to be it mainly for the run uh, but like I said this car was a lot of fun to drive it felt really good to drive as well uh, very smooth very flexible considering we're racing on the hards um, but yeah it was a really really good car so I really enjoyed driving it and not to mention go, just going five laps itself on fuel map one mix which is pretty crazy um, so like I mentioned before we're just coming pit road and just get ourselves fuel uh, now I won't be able to get enough fuel I'm not going to put 100% all I'll be doing here is just add enough fuel just to get by with at least three laps because seeing how massively good the fuel mileage is for this car there really isn't no need to fill it all the way up other because you'll be wasting your time on pit road also you'll be weighing the car down with all that liquid inside the tank uh, so really there's no need for me to fill it up at least for five laps I just need at least three uh, just to be on the safe side so here we are coming to have pit stop and like I said just fill her up with fuel uh, depending on how much time you got left will be the, how many laps you need to do it so I'm going to do 3.3 .3 laps left just to be on the safe side and as we get 
finished it with the race. We actually did put a couple of the AI drivers a lap down. Uh, so this was in fact a really, really quick build. And I was able to go below four minutes on lap seven. That was really good. So this car is really fast. Um, may not be as quick as the Mazda or the Skido um, that I've driven in the past, but still a very reliable, quick car around the mall. Um, been able to go across eight laps around the track uh, with this car. So it's a really good build. Really recommend giving this a shot if you haven't already. Um, really recommend you know trying this out because it's really good. So as we get the race done, uh, last guy on the finish up the race. Very dominant performance from this car. So I really enjoyed driving this car. It was really good. I uh, felt a lot of fun to drive, especially in those corners. Just being able to just really go in as hard as you possibly can in those corners. So, we did a 354.924 on lap 2, which was our fastest lap of the race before the rains came. Um, so yeah, it's a really quick car. Below 4 minutes. We kept the car clean. We didn't wreck anybody. And that's going to be it uh, for our race at Le Mans. So hopefully this video will help you out at Le Mans. Hopefully you guys do have this car. Um, it was a lot of fun driving this car at Le Mans. It was just a really smooth, super quick build um, around the track using this car. A really good combination. So if you guys have the car, then if you want a different car to farm at Le Mans, then there you go. Um, like I said, it's very fun, very enjoyable to drive it around the mall. So, yeah. So hopefully you guys, in fact, enjoyed the episode. If you, if you did, why not leave a like on the video. And if you're curious and would like to follow me some more, why not go ahead and subscribe to the channel as well as I try my best to upload daily with all kinds of farming videos um, that I share. I also have plenty of more farming videos coming in the future as well. So just tune in with, tune in with that. So if you guys are also interested, check out my last video I did using the Honda NSX 92 at Tokyo Expressway. You can click on the field right about there. it would be a full guide of how to get the car and a full build guide as well around the top track. Hopefully that field will be a big up to you too. Hopefully you guys are, has a great rest of the day or night wherever it might be. And I'll see you guys later. Take care.